don't see a lot of calls outside of Obamacare, which I think was pretty unique in that the Democrats just had all the cards in one moment in history. You don't see a lot of call for big government programs. You don't actually even see that much of a call for more government spending on things like education because they're spending so much and getting so little result. I think people are recognizing that more money, more power is not going to solve the problem. And then people are beginning to look for alternatives. It's still early, but we have to be out there saying no, coercion is never going to work to solve these problems. Coercion is like a drug for a toothache. You know, you take heroin for a toothache. You feel fine for a little while, and then the rot sets in deeper. And then when you do finally go see the dentist, it's way worse than if you'd gone up front. So in a democracy, you can bribe a whole bunch of people with the money of the unborn. You can sell off uh, you know, the fetuses to the banksters around the world. The bill comes due, and the longer we push it off, the worse it's going to be. And I think people are just kind of getting around to the point now. And there's not any economists that deny that now. No. You're right. We've reached the point now where 10 years ago we'd talk about this. Oh, that doesn't exist. Now... It's like, okay, you're right, it's going on, but what are you going to do about it? Well, the stimulus package, the whole Keynesian thing, right? Like, oh, well, there's a dip in the demand, which is the result of prior Fed policies and pushing everyone into a home policies. And people say, well, the stimulus package is going to even things out and then it's going to grow again. Well, they had the largest stimulus package in the history of the known universe and the economy is still a complete mess. So I think people are no longer, they, they're hitting the, the, the gas pedal, but there's no gas getting to the engine. I think people are recognizing it's just not working anymore. And I hope that people are beginning to look at voluntary options for solving some very deep social problems, half of which are natural to the human Sure, condition. but what do you expect to happen in the interim as those that follow the God of the state discover that the golden calf isn't gonna deliver? <laughs> Well, you say some of them are going to double down. And those people we have to call out on a moral basis. I think the practical argument has been won. You know, libertarians have been saying for 40, 50 years, or if you count classical liberals, 250 years, that the state is not going to produce anything good in the long run. We've won the practical argument because the results are just so catastrophic around. Thomas the Jefferson is right. Yeah, yeah. That, that, the, the, nobody's arguing, well, a bit more state and we'll be fine. You know, I mean, this is the death throes of the addiction to state coercion. But what we need to start hitting people with, Alex, is the moral argument that when they say more taxation will solve the problem, what they're saying is more violence, more theft, more, more stealing, more stealing, more debt is going to solve the problem. That they're advocating an escalation of violence to solve complex problems. We've got to call them out morally. The practical argument has been won, but we need to hit them hard in the moral solar plexus, so to speak. I agree with you. Let me just throw a total wild card at you because I keep seeing this in the news. Every time I turn around, leaders in government and, and the people that are over the, quote, child porn investigations are reportedly involved in it. Here's the Daily Mail. Why did number 10 cover up AIDS child porn arrest? Downing Street only confirms details when pressed by mail as further sex allegations against PM's friend emerge. Here's an example of government. Statistically, truancy officers in CPS... People can look this up at the highest level of pedophilia. Hmm. So the, the people that are overstopping it are the ones that are involved in it. I mean, right there proves the whole state argument. W why is that? What, I mean, what is that? People who wish to do evil congregate to the state. I mean, this is, there wasn't this the BBC. This is the government run. You have to pay the, the, the taxes for it, whether you like it or not. A bunch of pedophiles running. Yeah, a bunch of pedophiles. Just Jimmy Seville and all these people with like a 30-year pedophile ring going on up there. People in power uh, are the people who want power, are the people who want to get over the rules they're imposing on others. I mean, did you read this John Kerry quote about how horrible it is to invade a sovereign country when he was talking about Putin and, and Ukraine? I mean, the, the level of hypocrisy shown by the, those in power is astounding. It's like watching two alcoholics scream, you're a drunk, at each other when they're both complete alcoholics. So people who want to do great evil gravitate to where you're exempt from the moral rules and exempt from the law, which is at the top of the status apparatus. That's why expecting the state to save us from evil, the state is a giant magnet for evildoers. And it gives them the most possible power that you can have in this known universe. So it seems to me that if you want to do terrible things like, like uh, rape children, yeah, gravitate towards the government. The SEC, during the financial crisis, the lead up to the financial crisis, the amount of pornography that was found on the SEC computers ran into the thousands. They had PowerPoint presentations of rampant pornography being developed and shown in the SEC while they were supposed to be guarding everybody's financial interests. Well, you know, if you're into looking at porn at work, of course you want to go work for the government because in the private sector, you'd be tossed out.
it's just amazing how disconnected they are. And really, historically, it's government, Nero, Caligula, the examples are legion, that become delusional, announce their God, and then build pyramids and say, bring your children up here to be sacrificed to me to show your ultimate service to them. The whole world becomes a giant Jim Jones cult drinking government Kool-Aid. We'll be right back with Stefan Molyneux. Who has the perfect piece of gear for your bushcraft pack or bug out bag? Canteenshop.com. Want to be able to start a fire in any weather? Canteenshop.com. Need a well built handcrafted knife that'll be passed down for generations? Get to Canteenshop.com for the best selection of high quality hand picked gear from over 20 small U.S. businesses and big name brands to bring you the best that the bushcraft survival world has to offer. Canteenshop.com. What's missing? What's missing from your kit? We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy bodies products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. Question, could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonix. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com. Spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. We are back live. I am your host, Alex Jones. Stefan Molin is with us, I guess, 20 minutes of the next hour. We'll start taking your calls coming up here in about 20 minutes on any subject you'd like to discuss. IRS persecutions, you name it. Lois Lerner taking the fifth, even though the IRS tells American slaves they can't take the fifth on their tax forms. Uh, and then we're going to get into the fake global warming. It's Stefan Molyneux's take on that. The incredible anti-gun uh, confiscation uh, garbage that's going on. 
the victim disarmament that's going on is unprecedented now. Bloomberg wants Facebook to not allow you to have pro-gun posts defending the Second Amendment. I mean, this is really unprecedented. The statists are now losing the intellectual battle, so they're moving towards censorship. That's coming up in the next long segment. This segment's only six minutes long. And Stefan, I know you're a big geopolitical analyst. I wanted to get your take uh, on the situation in the Crimea, in the Ukraine. Well, I guess the first thing to recognize is that up until 1953, the Ukraine was part of Russia and they still very much identify. I mean, the, the whole eastern half of the country speaks Russian and, and is very um, nationalistic, very Russian nationalistic. Uh, it is one of the most corrupt uh, uh, autocracies in, in all of Europe. In fact, in, in all of the world outside of Africa. I mean, the level of corruption is it's a mess. staggering. I mean, the amount of debt and so on. Now, they want to join the EU. You, a study came out, I shouldn't laugh because it's just tragic, but a study came out in, I think- in, Out of the fire into the furnace. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the amount of corruption in the EU has been estimated conservatively as about the same size as the entire economy of, the, of, of Ukraine. So the idea that they're going to go to the EU to try and get away from corruption is completely mad. Yeah, it's out of the frying pan into the fire. Now, of course, Russia has for many years been paying the Ukraine to store the black, uh, sorry, so the fourth fleet uh, is, is in Crimea. And when in a time of instability, when they don't know which way the government is going to go, it seems to me, I, I know, don't know for sure, but it seems to me that Putin is simply saying, I need to go in and secure my fleet. Because I don't know what's going to happen to the government. And this is exactly, I mean, if, if Turkey was about to be taken over, if America thought Turkey was about to be taken over by a communist government, they would move in to secure their bases. They would move in to secure their military assets. It seems to me that- Plus, this is right on the Russian border yeah. and used to be part of Russia. So it's, it's, and I'm not defending Russia. It's just the West is in there starting the whole thing is my issue. Yeah, and of course, uh, Russia, Putin, one of Putin's arguments is, look, he says, I stood behind the America when they went into Iraq, which I disagreed with, and when they wanted some of the Eastern Bloc countries to join uh, uh, EU and NATO, I, I didn't stand in the way. But, you know, enough interference, you know, they, he feels that the West is coming in and interfering on stuff right on the border. And remember what happened in 62 when uh, the missiles were going to be installed in Cuba. I mean, America went insane because it was right off the coast of America. And this is right off the coast Oh, right off the coast. It's right it attached to Russia, it, and it was a former satellite. So No, but you're right. They're moving NATO ships into that area as well. Yeah. And so America, it's a major escalation. And America has been spending $5 billion uh, over the past 15, 20 years to promote its agenda in, yeah, in Ukraine. And, you know, uh, there have been some uh, reports that some of the protesters are being directly paid by American uh, satellite organizations and so on. So that is an extreme uh, invasion of sovereignty of, of Eastern Europe and of, uh, of Russia. Again, not to defend Russia. It's an autocracy and Putin's a horrible thug. But it's a giant provocation and in common law and in common sense, you start something, you lose moral high ground, which shows the delusional nature with Kerry saying you can't invade countries when they just did this to Syria, they just did this to Libya, and now they actually started this operation. It just shows the hubris. You, you raised the point of Sarah Palin and Mitt Romney and Obama laughing at them. Yeah, so uh, in, in a debate with Mitt Romney uh, in the last cycle, uh, Mitt Romney said, well, you know, Russia could do something in the Ukraine. And uh, Barack Obama laughed at him and said, the, the 1980s are calling, they want their foreign policy back. Uh, the Cold War's been over for 20 years. Now, I think the Democratic Party has always had, had a pretty soft spot for Russia since the Alger Hiss incident and the HUAC, and they were covering up so much of uh, spies, Russian spies well, inside. Well, yeah, I mean, putting libertarians and conservatives and freedom lovers in death camps is their dream. So Stalin was kind of their rock star. Yeah, and the covering up of Stalin's crimes and all of this kind of stuff. So people- Let's just put it to you this way. They have, they have pinups, spread centerfolds of Stalin. Oh, yeah, they, they've, they've really been very pro-communist, very pro-Russia, because they're on the left, right? Because, you know, the moment is like- <laughs> Anti-Russia on the left is about as prevalent as anti-war sentiments when you have a Democrat in the White House. So, uh, yeah, so I think that they're not really seeing things very clearly. Russia has changed to some degree, but uh, it is still remains very uh, autocratic, very, very, very dictatorial. And, uh, you know, this guy came out of the KGB ranks, not known for its touchy-friendly democratic feelers. So uh, I think it is not something that is going to be a huge escalation situation. It's just that they moved to protect their military assets when there was an unstable government. That seems to me... I mean, I don't agree with any of it. I mean, it's all just a bunch of thugs, but I can say- And the EU yeah. just wants to liquidate a, a, another corrupt state and suck it dry. And this group of thugs want to be paid off by the EU for the assets. I mean, all it is is Russia and the EU and George Soros struggling over looting something. Well, and now, you know, way, the way they're being bought off, and it all comes back down to buying people off. It's all just a mafia movie in, in nice suits.
But they all end up getting, so now the EU is going to put a $15 billion aid package in. America is going to kick up in another billion dollars. Loan guarantees. Yeah, the banks are getting paid. And it's like poor, a payday loan. Yeah, the banks just get paid and the poor get poorer. It's the same story over and over. All right, I want to come back and cover a host of issues from global warming to the gun grab with Stefan Molyneux and your phone calls. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network.